I love NVIDIA's annual GTC event, and not just because it's where we hear from NVIDIA itself, but also because we get to learn, and that's important, about how its partners are using artificial intelligence to bolster their own business. Take CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity company that reported a phenomenal quarter a few weeks ago. CrowdStrike just announced a new collaboration with NVIDIA. They're using NVIDIA's AI computing services with data from their own AI-native cybersecurity platform. Don't worry, we're going to explain all this. Remember, these AI models are only as good as the data that's fed into them. So this partnership gives you everything you need to build automated cyber defenses for the enterprise. Of course, CrowdStrike's already done a fantastic job using AI to improve the platform. We know that. So how does tonight's announcement help them take it to the next level? Let's dig deeper with George Kirk. He's the co-founder, president, and CEO of CrowdStrike. Find out more. Remember, they had an unbelievable quarter, 30 plus, 30 plus, 30 plus. Mr. Kirk, welcome back to Man Money. Great to be here, Jim. Okay, so George, I think people are uh, anxious about a stock like NVIDIA because it wasn't like Jensen Wong comes out and says, listen, you've got to go buy NVIDIA's. It doesn't work like that. Right. He partners with people like you and everybody wins. So please explain this partnership because it's very significant. Mm -hmm. Well, when we think about AI and we think about what powers it, AI is the engine and the data is the oil. It's that simple. And we have it in spades and we collect trillions of signals, data signals, if you will, and threat events per day. So that can then be used, and we use that today, and we've used it since we started the company, to be able to train our AI algorithms. Well, Again, you have to explain that, because people don't understand the word train, and it's very important. Yeah. So with all these data sets that you have, you have to go through a process of feeding it through these mathematical models, okay. right? And the mathematical models will be able to figure out whether something is good or bad, just in simple terms, okay? okay? But the more data you throw at it, the, the better it gets. And that's really the training aspect of AI, okay. right? So once you get through the training aspect of it, then you go into the inference aspect. So you have the models built, then you feed new data sets into it, and then it will tell you if something is good or bad. The whole idea, though, is you can get through massive, massive amounts of data to figure out if something's good or bad, things that have never been seen before. And this was a key part of the thesis when I started CrowdStrike, is to create this data platform that not only do we create first party data, but now we ingest third party data. And what we're talking about with NVIDIA as a, as a producer of mass amounts of security data is to be able to leverage their Morpheus framework to allow our customers to bring their own LLM models. So okay. we've got the data, they've got the power and the software. Right, so the, the large language models in play from the customers, but George, last time you were on, I thought you already had all the AI you needed. We do, but when you look at the chips, the chips, you know, it's all about uh, Jensen and, and NVIDIA, right? That, that's where the game is being played. Meaning it's, it's, it's a quantum leap. It's a quantum leap, it. yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have to have a quantum leap because you said in the release that the average breakout uh, time is now down to 62 minutes with the fastest recorded attack being just over two minutes. Modern attacks grow faster and more sophisticated. But what happens if the bad guys have similar things? Or, can, or is this finally the leap that we've wanted so that the bad guys can be stopped? Well, what we've seen from an AI perspective is that the bad guys have figured out a way to democratize these attacks. Right. So they're very complicated, very esoteric, but what they're doing is they're making it available to the cybercrime masses, if you will. Meaning, even if you don't have a high skill set, you can buy the ability to understand how to get into a company or create an attack or create a phishing email and get in or even buy an identity to a company and then use that uh, through a ransomware uh, scheme. So and, it, it's very difficult. I know in your document you talk about the batched identity. Microsoft makes the identity. You have the Octa batch the identity, and then you guys actually protect me. We protect Mick. the identity. Now, one of the things that I, I don't understand is why doesn't the Justice Department call you, work with you, and put someone in jail for life and end this nonsense? It's... It's pretty complicated. So when you think about what the government's doing, and I think there's some good work going on in all different areas of the government, whether it's state or federal, um, it becomes very difficult uh, with some of these threat actors. Not everyone is in the United States. Not everyone is, a, is above 18. I mean, when we think about this, right? So the complexity is, is high. We certainly understand what's happening in this environment. And I think when you, when you look at the authorities, they, they want to get the right case. They want to be able to prosecute it and get it closed. But then you know what happens? The next batch comes up. It's just a, an, another crop of people. And when we think about democratizing through AI, you're going to have many, many more attackers than you have today because AI is going to empower them. All right, then let me take it another way. How about if we just said, like we do with, uh, with international terrorists, anyone who pays is going to be prosecuted. 
provided you have the right stuff, you have CrowdStrike, you have a high end, if you can't pay, you can't pay ransomware. So that the bad guys know that no one's going to pay because the person who pays is going to jail. Again, a very difficult subject. When you look at even OFAC rules, if you're paying a ransom, is it to a, a sanctioned country? And, and what are the complexities around that? If it was that easy, I think they would have done it. It's just a lot of complexities uh, because the Internet is, is worldwide, right? It, right? So what happens if you pay at a European uh, entity? Right. Like, it's, it's difficult. All right. Now, what are you able to say about the return on investment now that you have this partnership? Can you go to a major bank and say, look, you're not going to get better than us. We're, here's the bill. And, then, and, and they say, well, that's really high. How do I prove that it's worth it? Well, what we've been able to do is to prove a high return on investment for all the platform modules that we have at CrowdStrike. This will be another capability that we'll be able to offer to our customers where through the data sets we have, they'll be able to do this in a much more cost-efficient fashion than just doing it on their own. The thing you have to remember with data gravity, meaning the data is in our platform, mm -hmm. right? If you can leverage the models in the platform, that becomes much more cost-efficient than shipping it off somewhere else and bringing it all back in. And that's what we're uh, planning on doing with our customers. Leverage the data that we have at the source and cut down the cost for customers. Okay, now I am discovering that uh, when there's a hack, I'm now, I think all of us are experiencing that we're getting phone calls from people who are trying to sell us services and they know too much about us. Uh, is this the next generation they steal, they get in, they take something, and then they uh, have salespeople call you and people might maybe fall for it? Uh, it can be that way, but I tell you how organized it is. Some of the companies that get ransomed, they have to pay in Bitcoin, right? They may not know how to pay in Bitcoin. So there's actually a help desk, multi-language mm -hmm. support. How do you pay in Bitcoin? Most people don't know how to pay in Bitcoin or have a Bitcoin right. wallet, right, for the most part. So they'll actually walk you through that with uh, multi-language support. They'll teach you how to do it. They'll show you videos. And then when they're done, because they want to be able to prove to you that they've destroyed the data, they'll actually film that. And then they'll send over a report with recommendations on how they got in and what to use and even what software and company to use to prevent against. And you've made it clear that um, if you don't go through the process, they rat you out to the SEC because you have four days. So you, you, you lose either way. Exactly. We, I called the triple threat. So first was ransoming your data, encrypting it. The second way was then uh, exfiltrating or stealing the data. And even if you restored from backup, they would leak the data to a dedicated leak site. That's Item number two. And item number three now, the triple threat is for a public company, what they're actually doing is using the SEC guidance or guidelines against the company. So they'll say, hey, you've been breached, and they start the clock. You have four days to pay the ransom, or they're going to report you to the SEC. Well, I would get as many protections as I can if I were running a big public company and had to worry about that. That's George Kirk. He's the co founder, president, CEO of CrowdStrike. And remember, we talked about the numbers last time, and they were stellar. I thought that you should understand this combination with NVIDIA and why it is so important to the company, and only, of course, to the welfare of the shareholders. My money back here. Coming up, as automotive slips into a lower gear, is this chip stock stuck in traffic? Kramer gets to the bottom of it when we return. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.